Shalom, Agar, back with another video. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, by Shem meaning coming in the name of, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So called blacks, native Indians, and Hispanics, we are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the Hebrews the Bible speaks of. We must repent and be converted and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Today I'm going to give a lesson on a nagging wife, right? But in the sense of the children of Israel being the wife of the Most High God, being a nagging wife, right? So I'm likening the children of Israel unto a nagging wife, right? So um, first we're going to get into a nagging wife and then how it correlates to the behaviors of Israel, right? So without further ado, let's just get into it. Um, let's get the book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13 in the GNT. So this is the book of Proverbs chapter 19, in verse 13, it says, Stupid children can bring their parents to ruin. A nagging wife is like water going drip, drip, drip. Right? If you don't understand what that means, that means it's continual. It keeps dripping. It keeps going. It keeps nagging. Right? That wife keeps nagging. A nagging wife is like water going drip, 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 right? Now let's get Proverbs 21, verse 19, also in the GNT. Better to live out in the desert than with a nagging, complaining wife. So instead of living with a nagging and complaining wife that continually goes drip, 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 it's better to live in the in the desert, right? Now let's get Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 24 in the GNT. The book of Proverbs chapter 25 verse 24 in the GNT. Better to live on the roof than share the house with a nagging wife. You see that? A nagging wife, no one wants a nagging wife. No one wants to live with a nagging wife. Brothers rather live in the corner of their house, in the roof of their house, or in the desert than with a nagging wife, right? And remind you, Israel is the wife of Yahweh, right? Yahweh is the husband. So now, imagine us being likened to a nagging wife my goodness. But um, let's get into it again. Let's get the book of Proverbs chapter 27 and 15 and 16. A nagging wife is like water going drip, drip, drip on a rainy day. How can you keep her quiet? Have you ever tried to stop the wind or ever tried to hold a hand full of oil? You can't stop it. You can't stop a nagging wife. She's like water that drips continually. Right? How can you keep her quiet? You can't keep her quiet. Have you ever tried to stop the wind? How can you stop the wind? You can't stop the wind. That's, that's a nagging wife. Trying to stop the wind. Now, now let's get into the book of Sirach. Chapter 25, 13 to 16. No wound is as serious as wounded love. No troubles are as serious as the troubles that woman call, um, women cause. No sufferings are worse than the sufferings caused by people who hate you. No revenge is worse than revenge taken by an enemy. 
No poison is deadlier than the poison of a snake. This is the point I'm making here. And no anger is deadlier than the anger of a woman. I would rather live in the same house with a lion or a dragon than with a bad wife. You see that? A lion and a dragon. I'd rather live in a house with a lion and a dragon than with a bad wife. Right? Now let's get 17 and 18. When a wife is a in, is in a bad mood, her expression changes until the until she looks like an angry bear. <laughs> her husband has to go and eat with the neighbors where he can't hold back his bitter sighs. Now imagine that. It's so bad in your household that the expressions on your ribs, face, right? Is like a wild bear, right? And then you like, man, I can't even be, I can't even eat in here, man. I'm gonna go next door, man. I'm gonna go sit down and eat with my neighbor, right? I'm gonna go eat with my neighbor. Probably have a drink, right? Now, now check this part out. Hold on. This is the best part. Where he can't hold back his bitter sighs. So think about that. You over there with your neighbor and you just Man, it's wild living over there, right? This is a nagging wife. Now imagine, imagine the, the size of the Most High looking at Israel as we rebel against him, right? Now, let's get Sirach 25 and verse 19. Compared with other trouble, Compared with other troubles caused by a woman, any other trouble looks small. May such women suffer the fate of sinners. Right? A quiet man, this is um, the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 20 in the GNT. A quiet man living with a nagging wife is like an old man climbing up a sandy hill. Now, Climbing up a sandy hill is not easy for regular people, right? Imagine an elderly man, right? An elderly man is going to be going through it trying to climb up a sandy hill. It says a quiet man living with a nagging wife is like an old man climbing up a sandy hill. He is going through it. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> this quiet man... Living with this nagging beast of a woman, he is going through it. Right? Let's get let's drop down to 23. A bad wife will make her husband gloomy and depressed and break his heart. Show me a timid man who can never make up his mind, and I will show you a wife who doesn't make her husband happy. <laughs> That's wild. It says a bad wife will make her husband gloomy and depressed and break his heart. Breaking my heart. You breaking my heart. Right? Who wants to come home to a nagging wife? Or who wants a nagging wife coming home to them? Right? No matter how it go, a nagging wife, continual disturbance, that's wild, man. That's wild. Now let's drop down to um, 24. Sin began with a woman, and we must all die because of her. You see that? Sin. Sin. And what is sin? Sin is a transgression of the law. Mmm, that's a cut, right? Because if the law is new, then how, how is this saying that sin began with the woman? We all know that Eve was the one that sinned, right? So now, Eve... Being the one that sinned is the one that sin began with. And because, because of her, we all die, right? Sin began with a woman, and we must all die because of her. Sin began with Eve. 
with Eve. Sin began with Eve, right? Now it says, don't let a bad wife have her way any more than you would allow water to leak from your cistern. So now if your sink is busted and it's just gushing out water, right? You going to just let it? Of course not. You going to get to it and make sure that that, that joint is fixed, right? So now, don't let a bad wife have her way any more than you would allow water to leak from your cistern. If she won't do as you tell her, divorce her, right? Divorce her. If she won't do as you tell her, divorce her, right? This is talking about the nagging wife, man. Advice about women. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25 in the GNT. 25 and 26 says, if she won't do as you tell her, divorce her. Now, I'm only bringing this up because this is how Israel has treated Yahweh, our God, right? Like a nagging, complaining wife, right? I feel like, man, if if we were going through these things with a nagging wife, we would divorce her, right? But what kind of shape would we be in, right, if the Most High divorced us? What kind of shape would Israel be in if the Most High turned his back on us and said, you know what, to hell with the covenant I made with this, this, these, this whore of a people, right? This great whoredom, these idolaters, right? What if the Most High divorced us? Like, this is something we need to start thinking about, right? We need to come back to these laws. Now, let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 26, and we're going we're gonna to go to 14. A wife who doesn't talk too much is a gift from the Lord. You see that? A wife that doesn't talk too much is a gift from the Lord. We need to stop complaining, right? We need to stop complaining and always murmuring. We need to be better. We need to be a better wife, right? Now, let's go let's go up to 7. We're going to go back up to 7. Um this is the book of Sirach chapter 26 verse 7. A bad wife is like a yoke that doesn't fit. Trying to control her is like holding a scorpion. See that? A yoke a yoke that don't fit, like a yoke of vine around your neck. Like, it's, it's terrible. A nagging wife is terrible. A, a bad wife is terrible. A bad wife is like a yoke that doesn't fit. Trying to control her is like holding a scorpion. Ain't nobody trying to hold no scorpion because we already know we, we about to get stung. Now, let's go to chapter 26 and 25. So this is the book of Sirach in the GNT, chapter 26 and verse 25. It says, a self-willed woman is a B word, right? It, sa it says B word in here. It literally says female dog, right? It says bitch. A self-willed woman is a bitch. That's what it says in this book. That's what it says, literally. It says it right there. Come on, come on. Well, I'm not sure if you saw it. But if you Google, a self-willed woman is a bitch, it'll pop up as Sirach chapter 26, verse 25, right? So now, a self-willed woman, that means a woman that does what she wants to do right? Self-willed. I will to do my own will, right? That's what a self-willed woman is. Now, let's correlate this. Let's correlate this self-willed woman, this female dog, right? This nagging wife, this bad wife. Let's correlate her with Israel. Let's turn to the book of Exodus chapter 16. Chapter 16, verse 2 and 3. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. 
And the children of Israel said unto them, would to, would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill us, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So this is the children of Israel, these ungrateful, nagging, <laughs> this ungrateful, nagging wife, right? This female dog, this self-willed woman, right? The Most High just took us out of Egypt, right? By a mighty hand. We was in slavery. He just took us out of Egypt, took us out of slavery. And our people are complaining that they, they, they want food. They're hungry, right? They even went as far as to say, man, you should have just left us in Egypt. At least we would have had food over there, right? Now let's turn to Exodus 17 and chapter 3. I mean, Salakia. Exodus chapter 17 and verse 3. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is thus is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? So now they just murmured for food. They complained. They nagged for food. Now they're complaining and they're nagging for water, right? A nagging people. They're still like the rain, drip, drip. Drip is continual with them, right? They want to keep going. Let's get the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and 25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? So that's just to say, like, we, we sitting here, we worried about the wrong things. We, we talking about slavery. We talking about slavery here. We just es escaped slavery by the hand of God. And we talking about we hungry. Like, we, we should have just... Stayed in slavery because we hungry? Like, no endurance whatsoever. They was not trying to endure. They needed food, right? They want food. They want water. All kind of stuff. Now, the Most High said, you don't got to worry about these things because I'm going to give them to you. You know what I'm saying? But, like, this was a faithless people, right? I mean, if you have faith, we should see your faith. You shouldn't have been in that captivity. You know what I'm saying? If you had faith in God, you shouldn't have been in that captivity. But we are stiff-necked people, man. Now let's turn to the book of Hosea, chapter 1. Chapter 1 and verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land has committed great whoredoms departing from the Lord, right? He, the, the Most High is saying, I mean, go, won't you go get a wife from, from a whore? Like, pick a whore out to be your wife. He's making an analogy here to Israel. We are the whore. Of course we don't want a whore to wife. Why would we want a whore? That's with everybody, right? But that's what we have done to the Most High. We have, we have left his ways. We have forsaken his commandments, right? And now we're the great whore. We're a whore now. Now let's get Hosea chapter 2 and verse 1 through 8. Say ye unto your brethren, Ami, to your sisters, Ramah, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight, and her adulteries from between her breast, lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born. 
and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. <laughs> See that? They go that word thirst again, right? We thirsty, we, we hungry, we murmuring, we whores, man. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. This is Hosea chapter 2, verse 4. For they be the children of whoredoms. Now, verse 5. For their mother has played the harlot. She that conceived them has done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water. <laughs> All praises to the most. High. I didn't even notice this was in here. But it says... She's being a whore to go get some bread and water, right? She's chasing after the lovers that's going to give her bread and water. It's all about that bread, huh? My wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall. What she shall not find her paths. That, like it, that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. Right? So now, here it is. When the whore finally opens her eyes, when she's no longer blinded and realized, all these lovers, they're not even here. Right? These lovers aren't even here. These idols we worship aren't even here. Only the Most High God. I was at my best when I was with the Most High God. So now I will go and return to my first husband. For then was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Right? I mean... Everything comes from the Most High, right? The Most High has given us everything that we, we have, right? And we're going to turn to to sin? We're going to turn to break His laws? That's wild. Now, let's get the book of Philippians chapter 2. The book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Do all things without murmuring, without complaining. Be content, man, and wait on the Most High. He doesn't fail us, right? Now let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. See that? The Most High was destroying folks back in them days, man. He's destroying folks now for playing with them, right? You don't want to die like those who complained and murmured. You don't want to die like that nagging wife, right? Don't be that nagging wife, man. Don't be that self-willed woman, right? Now let's get Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 30. Salakia. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 through 12. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So a virtuous woman, a good woman, will do her husband good all the days of her life, right? Now let's drop down to 30 and 31. The book of Proverbs, KJV, chapter 31, verse 30 and 31. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, right, a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. But now, let's take a look at this one more time. This is Proverbs chapter 31, 
and 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. A woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Now, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Now let's turn to the book of Sirach, chapter 2, 15 and 16. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? They that fear the Lord will be filled with the law, right? A woman that, is, that fears the Lord will be, will be filled with the law. A woman that is filled with the law well pleases him, right? That's all it's about, pleasing the husband, right? Yeah, how is the husband and Israel is the wife? We need to do better in becoming a better wife, right? A woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? Now let's get... Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22 verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. To those servants went out. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Right? And when the king came to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So now, this is talking about a wedding. We're talking about a nagging wife. We're talking about the Most High. This is talking about a wedding, right? We have to be prepared for this wedding. We have to be prepared for this wedding. And being nagging, um, nagging all the time is not being prepared, right? Murmuring all the time, complaining all the time, not being content, not following the Most High's laws. We are not ready for this wedding, right? We need to get ready for this wedding. We need to get ready for the return and get right with the Most High God before He destroys us, like those He destroyed before who were murmuring, right? Let's turn to the book of 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra chapter, uh, verse 1. 
chapter 2. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Sion a great people, whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and receive palms. So these are they that put off the old man. They put off the old clothing, right? They put on their wedding garments. That's what's going on here. These are they that put on their wedding garments. The ones that are prepared, that were that that stayed prepared for the Most High's return, right? For the Most High's glory. Now let's get. I'm gonna close out with this last scripture. I'm gonna get the Book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife has made herself ready. All praises to the Most High. The marriage has come and the, the Lamb's wife is ready, right? So now, I hope somebody was edified through the duration of this video. As the children of Israel, we are a nagging wife. We are the complainers. We are the ones that are never content with what we have. We always want more. We want bread. We want water. We rather go back into slavery, right? All kind of craziness, man. We need to do better for the Most High. We need to work towards being ready. We need to be prepared, right? So, with that, I hope somebody gained some kind of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding out of this. So called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the Hebrews the Bible speaks of, right? And with that, Shalom. Um, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shad. That's giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh. Bashim meaning coming in the name of, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Shalom, Mawafla Babal.